Hi, I'm Andy Fitzsimmons. I'm your Washington Realtors Legal Hotline lawyer. And this video is another in our series entitled Perspectives on a Transitioning Market. And in this video series, we have been bringing you interviews with industry professionals who assist brokers in closing transactions. This perspective interview is a little bit different. I'd like you to meet Megan Anderson. Megan, how long have you had your real estate license? One year, five months. So Megan is bringing the perspective of a newer broker uh, to, this, to this video series. I represent the old guard. <laughs> Shelly represents the experienced oh, there you guard. Go. Okay. And Megan is the less experienced broker facing a transitioning market for the first time ever in your career. I, if you've been selling for, if you've been licensed for a year and five months, then you have only known, until the last few weeks at least, crazy seller's market, right? Yes. All right. So um, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm sorry, I've stolen a little bit of your thunder. We already know you're Megan Anderson. Where are you licensed? I am licensed at Keller Williams Premier Partners in Vancouver, Washington. Okay, so you're licensed to Shelley's firm. Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, what do you think about the real estate industry? Uh, I love it. Um, it was always something that I enjoyed before being licensed and um, it just kind of came seamlessly and I, I love it. It's very fast paced and something new every day. Have you found success in the real estate industry? Yes, yes, I have. Uh, to, what, what does that mean? What have you got? Um, so to date, uh, I've closed 30 transactions. I have three currently in escrow and three active listings. Nice. That's congratulations. Honestly, <laughs> Thank that's you. great. 30 transactions closed in less than a year and a half of experience, not just in a year and a half, but a first year and a half in the business. How did you do that? Because that's kind of crazy. <laughs> Um, really, I just, I, I'm with a great brokerage and I plugged into everything that they have to offer. Um, I started right out the gate taking our Ignite course. Um, Ignite course teaches what? It, it teaches the basics of everything from... So you're already licensed and this is a different, not, this is not a pre-licensing course you're talking about. No, this is after, yeah, this okay. is after licensing. Um, and I think actually I was under contract before I on my first property before I had even completed the class which made things interesting <laughs> um, but I really just plugged into everything and did what they told me to do all right nice um, are in your practice then are you personally seeing any not not your personal life are you within your real estate brokerage sales are you seeing a change in the market already yes yes what are you seeing so last year primarily i i found that even if i focused on the listings i was having more buyers than than sellers and in the last month um, that is completely flip-flopped and now i'm seeing i'm having more listings um still have a easy you know a, a flow of buyers coming a lot from sign calls but um the majority of my business right now is listings Okay, um, are, you, are you seeing your listings? I mean, you know, when you were representing buyers, you were representing buyers who were competing against a whole bunch of buyers for the same property. Are your listings selling to a multiple buyer scenario? Um, there still are some that are. Um, and I, I feel like the ones that are selling quickly are the ones that are properly priced, um, the ones that we've had you know, in-depth conversations about pricing um, and what's to come. Um, so there are some that are still selling with multiple offers and going over our list price, um, but I do have some um, that are still kind of living in the, the past few months, um, and that conversation is a little bit more difficult. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, I'd say it's probably, I'm seeing more that are sitting on the market, but there are still some that are selling. Okay. okay. So you're hearkening back to something that Shelly said in a prior video, uh, talking about pricing with sellers and properly pricing. Shelly's been doing this for 30 years, so I know how she knows the nuts and bolts of pricing and talking to sellers about pricing challenges. How do you know? <laughs> um, 
Well, again, um, you know, our office has had a lot of conversations around this new market that's coming, and I knew that in order to <clears throat> assist, you know, my clients and future clients uh, in this shift, that I need to be my best self and and you know plug in. And um, so I've attended all of the shift conversations, and they've been invaluable in helping me have those conversations. Do you have a mentor in the firm? Um, I wouldn't really say that I have one specific mentor, but I did make sure to surround myself in all of the top agents in our office um, so that their, you know, their norm was my norm. And um, I feel like that's been very, very helpful. Okay. It, it sounds to me like your success was not accidental. It, it was intentional. You've done a lot of hard work to get yourself to a place where you can succeed in the industry. Is, is that fair? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so as we are looking at a transitioning market, and you just described that you're already seeing some changes in the market for yourself, is real estate like um, how you're supporting yourself and your family? I mean, are you, is, this, is this income important to you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, looking at a shifting market, you've got some houses that you've listed, they aren't selling necessarily as quickly as, as you'd like. Are you fearful of the market looking ahead? Are you fearful of the real estate industry as a career looking ahead? I'll be honest, when, when, when rates started rising, um, I did get a little nervous. Back in 2008, I was in retail banking, and so I saw kind of another angle of this. Um, and I really just wanted to, I was initially a little fearful of it. Um, I just made sure that I had the right conversations with the right people. And I will say that I don't really have the fear of this new market. Um, I know that it's just going to make me I'll get more creative and be able to assist my clients in a different way. Have you made any personal changes in your finances and your budgeting, anything like that in, in looking forward? Uh, yeah, I would say I, well, my marketing is looks different um, now. So I've kind of tightened my budgets. My marketing is target, targeted more towards buyers now than it was for sellers. Okay. Um, and of course, I've had the conversation with my husband to, you know, as we transition to this, let's just make sure that we're smart spending. Um, okay. So some slight adjustments. Okay. I love it. I love, I love the confidence. <laughs> that you um, possess and exude. Shelly, I don't think every one year, five month old broker has the confidence that Megan has. Right. What is your advice to the brokers out there who don't have you as their designated broker and may not have as much confidence as Megan does? So plug in, right? Plug into what is available from the education side whether it's within your market center, within your association, you know, your videos are a huge help. Everyone should be watching these. Um, so really plug in and then surround yourself with those that have either been through a shift so you can learn from them or those people that are like, I haven't been through a shift. I've been in the industry though for quite some time and they have the mindset of how to figure out to move forward. Those, that is what you want to surround yourself with. And do the tasks that you have to do to keep going forward, because then you won't have fear. And if you don't have fear, you're not paralyzed standing still. And that Megan is such a, a great example of, of plugging in and learning and asking questions. And she has come across her first and she'll pick up the phone, Shelly, well, I have a managing broker, Michael McCafferty. She'll be like, Michael, or she's talking to other brokers going, I have this, what, what are your thoughts? How do I deal with this? Or here's a conversation I had with a client and it, it didn't go as well I as I was hoping. Is there something else I can share with them to help them? And she is so good about just getting out there and asking and just she just puts herself out there. Um, but she's also very smart with her marketing and marketing of herself, not just oh. her listings. Tell us about that. 
So, and I'll have, I'll, actually, I mean, you'd probably talk way more on that, but I love her social media marketing. Like, oh, okay. I, I'm always like, I wonder what Megan's doing. I wonder what's up with Megan. She's such a good example of how to do it in, in, a, in a way that you're not like, ugh, another thing from Megan. But, oh, what, what else is new? So, and actually, I think you should speak to how you market yourself and how you did it really from day one. Well, honestly, it's uh, I do love the social media aspect of marketing, and honestly, because this is such a relationship-based business, I I guess I just um, I just share my daily activities and my life, and I guess it, I think it builds a form of trust, um, and I. I I think that I make it so that it's, I guess it's hard to forget me, I guess. That makes sense in the most like low key way to say that. Um, you know, whether it's home remodeling or um, your dog You mean your parties. own personal home remodeling? Yeah. Is that what you mean? Or? Yeah, or my investment properties or, um, you know, pulling down horrid wallpaper at the beach out. You know, I just, um, I, I guess I try to connect with my future clients and my sphere in such a deep way that um, I, I, the majority of my business comes from the connections that I've made on social media. Is that something that you learned from when you kept using the term plugging in? Is that something that within your firm you talk about? How do you use social media as a marketing tool? Is that something you know just generationally because that's what your, you and your peers, how you communicate? <laughs> Um, I would love to say that I did learn that part from my brokerage, but honestly, I have taught mm -hmm. um, some classes at our office for, so for that piece. So you are good at social media. Yeah, and it's probably it probably does come with my generation. Um, and, but yes, I and I, I it's not for everybody. It's okay. definitely not, and there's safe ways to do it. Um, and there are negative sides occasionally, but for the most part, it it's the one of the biggest sources of my business. Interesting. Okay, great. Anything else that we need that uh, a, a new broker perspe perspective can bring to this transitioning market? I, I, I do think that there is, I mean, you, w if you read the headlines, you know, there's lenders who are making layoffs, title and escrow are making layoffs. And, and I do think that there are a lot of people, and, and honestly, our, our industry, you know, this happens with, with every cycle, and I expect it will happen again, where you know, membership within our industry, the brokerage community increases during really strong markets. And I don't know that we're headed, we keep, we're talking this transition market as if we're gonna go, go, go into some kind of a downfall. I don't, I don't, neither of you are saying that. None of our guests have said that. And I don't necessarily think that's where we're going. I don't think that's where we're going. But I do think that there will be, that we'll lose some members of the brokerage community um, as the market slows, which it is no doubt doing. I would like to bring up the kind of the piece about the finances and Megan saying how she is looking at her finances tightening down, to, telling her husband, you know, we got to be smart about, you know, how we spend our money. And that is such a key. And it's no matter how long you've been in this business, it is such a key to really watch your finances. If you are not doing a P&L, a profit, profit and loss, you should be doing that. And if you're like, I don't even know what that is or how to do it, there are people out there that will help you. There are um, classes, you know, get connected with people because that is one of the biggest ways for you to see how you're doing, right? If you're like, I don't really know how to do a budget, then get with people who know how to do a budget well, especially if um, I would say get with people who are brokers so that they understand your industry and they understand how you're, you have to budget. Your business budget is different than your home budget. And but both are important. Both are huge, <clears throat> huge, huge. And so that would be one thing I would say. And, and Megan, Megan does that well. And just so plug in. Surround yourself with people. Hear what people are saying. Have the conversations. Really just take it in. Have it be part of your DNA so that when you are just anywhere and someone says, hey, how's the real estate market going? You just, you can answer. You, you have like when somebody asks me, this is what I say. And, and I always say, well, are you thinking of selling or buying? Depends on 
what side of this you're on, right? Depends on how mm-hmm. I answer it for them, for their needs. But especially as a newer broker and we're going in this transition, there are so many new things. Like I'm sure Megan is probably like hearing terms and seeing forms that she's like, haven't seen those ever. <laughs> or wow, it's been a while. I've heard of this 22B and now I have to actually learn how to use it. Is that true? Are you seeing forms and transactions in the last couple oh, months yeah, that you hadn't the, seen before? Yeah, yeah. And we, I, as, as soon as it, it, the class was on our schedule, I took it. So I, I, you know, I'm prepared. Yeah. Okay. And you've got somebody within your office where if you're the listing broker and you get an offer and you've got forms you've not seen in there before, somebody you can pick up the phone and say, what is a 22B? Yeah. Or, yeah, Shelly and Michael, um, I definitely have no problems with giving them a quick call. How important is that to you to have somebody that you can call? It's incredibly important because it's also, I think, a big contributor to my confidence because I know if I, I know that I'm confident in my ability to be able to push off a question, uh, but I'm, I'm, it's very important for me to have the ability to get the answer to that question quickly. And then how is that communicated to your client? Does your client, is that a weakness? When you're communicating with your client, let's see, you get this offer, there's a 22B, you've not seen that before, home sale contingency, I know you know what that is, but for yeah. um, home sale contingency, um, you get that, you've not seen it before, Does that is that a showing of weakness for your seller? How do you, how do you turn that, because I, I know it's not, how do you turn that into a, a sense of confidence that your seller has in you that you're gonna get answers? Um, Really, it probably just making sure that I don't put myself in a position that I need to see a form for the first time in front of one of my clients. That's probably the biggest part. But then after that, just having if I don't know the answer, um, I I tell them I have I have you know a huge network of people to get us through this. So you go into meetings, whether it's with another broker or with your client, prepared, prepared. for that meeting. Yes. So that you can go in with confidence. Yes. Great. Great. Anything else? No, is there anything else you would want to share with somebody? Because you're very much, right, new first shift. Um, for, uh, for a newer agent jumping into this, I, I know that we've both said it multiple times, but just plug in to everything your brokerage has to offer. Uh, if you're not getting what you need, go find it um, and just dive, dive head first. Yes, yes. There you go, there's the answer. If you have questions on this video or any other, visit warealtor.org, click on the link for the legal hotline, and ask me a question. Thank you for being a Washington Realtors member.